Hot 107.9, Atlanta's number one station. It's my Asia Simone back with another exclusive. And I got Mr. Rico Cash to the right of me. How are you? Hey, what's going on? Man, I mean, I'm feeling good, Rico. I'm in my red. You know, it's it's uh, have a heart month in American Heart Association, so I got on all my red. But how you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. How's your I'm, mental? I'm good. I'm in a good space. Man. I'm focused. I'm like more focused than I've probably ever been for real. Yeah, and yeah. and that's good because you know in this time where rappers are going through, it's a hard time for yeah, like being a rapper, being in hip hop. It's a really really emotional state, so it's yeah. good to know that you're in a good place. But well, we gonna go ahead and get right into it. So you used to hoop at Grady. Yeah. You started what? Started all four years varsity. Yeah. How you know that? I know that. I do my research. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I did my thing back then. I used to play basketball. I used to hoop too. I used to play shooting guard. So For real? if you ever need a, you know, you want to go back and okay. I got you. Okay. One on one. Um, what made you go from, I guess, hooping to rapping, or was that something that you've always done? Well, it was really like I went from hooping to like the streets. And everybody was like in a rap era, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And so I just kind of like, I uh, I started rapping. And when I started rapping, we first we were doing on like some little like just like some hood shit or like some little crew shit type mm -hmm. shit. But um, but you know I I kind of perfected it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then I dropped a project when I was in high school. And just randomly, like you just ended up in the studio, like. No, nah, I mean I was like kind of like aspiring but I I didn't expect for it to do nothing for real though yeah. you know what I'm saying it, I had a link though with another dude uh you probably know Land Strip Ship I heard it yeah I heard it yeah Strip so it. me and Chip linked up and we went to school together too and we were just like shit let's do a tape you rap I rap yeah. you know what I'm saying and and then you started went, taking serious no nah, it went crazy like yeah. it went <laughs> everywhere it was like Facebook day that was a minute yeah. you know oh yeah that was yeah when so, Facebook first started yeah so and then like and up signing a deal and you know, signing um signing a major deal. And that was years ago, that was like two thousand eleven. Yeah. But that's how I got into the music. That's amazing. Uh, but as far as like from hooping the to hooping just didn't work out and I and the streets I kinda like I caught up in the streets. Wait, why didn't it work out? Because I tore my ACL. That's the only reason why I was like, it let me get it back up then. I got distracted. I started okay. running the street. I yeah. started getting distracted and who became like way less important. I just was good to where, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't just quit because I was real good. But yeah. at the same time, like, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't get no better. And then the streets just like had me all. I just, you know, I'd be like, you yeah. hop out the porch and you just be gone. The fast money and the fast yeah. life and you just felt yeah. like it was more I that was, came with I was it. like grown as a child. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, I've been like done like a grown man. So I was yeah. like 14, like my mama tell you. So, wow. so. Really, music kind of like saved me back then at mm -hmm. the route I was going. And then, you know, even though I ended up getting like after my deal with Block and all that, mm -hmm. even though I ended up like taking the route I did, I feel like I was so young and I was, we was so wild that it saved me early. Music saved me early on because, now, like, when I look at like dudes that's like 17, 18, and mm -hmm. I think about what I was doing at 17, 18. Yeah. Or 16, I, I was doing stuff without, like, no, like, regard for what could happen. Yeah. And we were wild and, like, like, for real, for real, like, really tripping. And so, not, like, even when I was locked up, I see, I used to see dudes, they might be, like, 18 with life. Yeah. 18 with 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, damn, they ain't even, when they were doing that, they weren't even thinking it came with all that. So, you of make course. one decision. And then your whole and life. Your whole just, life gone. It's just you know changing. So that's why I say music saved me because mm -hmm. at least, y'all yeah, went to prison later mm -hmm. on in life. Twice, mm -hmm. but the shit I was doing at a young age, I was just young, just doing shit. I ain't end up in no fucked up spot like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, getting a little deeper into the music, you started and you were at one point inspired by Lil Wayne, where you said to the point where you wanted to be exactly yeah. like him. Yeah, Wayne, Wayne was like the biggest influence for me yeah. musically growing up. That was my favorite rapper. Now, who was your favorite Hooper? Like, who did you inspire to be? I don't know. He was. Now, speaking of, you know, like going through your life changes, you're transitioning, you at one point were locked up. I yeah, think you did. I, you were in prison, right? Yeah, I, w I did. I was locked up and for two years, and then mm -hmm. I went back to prison for three years. Man, like how does that, how did that change your perspective on life? Shit, like, um, it just taught me a lot of lessons about life. Mm -hmm. and about, it, it made me 
it made me a man for one. Mm-hmm. It it doesn't like prison don't make you a man, but I became a man in prison. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah, um, it just teach you like teach you stuff you can't learn. Like like give me one like what's one of the biggest lessons that you could take away? Okay, like my social skills or like okay. the way I, I I can read people. Okay. Because I'm stuck. I was stuck around people so much. That you saw all these different personalities. And, and exactly. And mm-hmm. in prison, there's always a motive. It's always a mind game. It's always like some type of so some type of catch to it. So it's like in the prison dorm that I was in, it's 120 people in there, right? Mm-hmm. So imagine if you live here with 120 people all day, and it's constant, constant, different uh, like interaction yeah. all day every day. Mm-hmm. So and it's constant. Whatever it is, a transaction, because you don't need to still making money in prison, or it's constant, like, just different shit. So you learn people because mm-hmm. you stuck around them. You've never been stuck around this many people at one, at time, one time in your life. Yeah, I mean, besides school. Even with school, you go home. Yeah, true. You don't go home. Yeah, true. This is where you live at. Yeah. So you stuck around them, and then it's, it's, a, it's a revolving door, so it's always new people. Mm-hmm. So you get used to so many different personalities that it's like, shit, by the time you come out of there, you was down there, you're a psychologist. Okay, so read me right now. What what you get from the first five minutes of our conversation? I mean, it depends on what, like, I can't really read you. I ain't no damn mind reader. <laughs> okay. But I'm saying, yeah, if I was saying. to talk to you, if mm-hmm. I was, like, to talk to you and spend the whole day with you, I could kind of, like, I could kind of, I can't really explain. I could kind of tell what kind of person you is. Mm-hmm. Better than most people. Would, because you, yeah, like, have time to study. Throughout what you say to me. And throughout what you speak on, you get what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and, and throughout how you treat other people, and it's not that I know something that, or teach you something that, you don't go through it out, out here in the free world, but it's like, you just learn to pay attention to it because it's a survival skill. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what I learned in prison more than anything. Survival skills. Survival skills. I like yeah. that. And your social survival and social skills. Yeah. I like that. So we're out of prison. We putting that behind us. We're not going back. (laughs) Career is going crazy. I mean, you got a baby boy on the way, right? Yeah. Congratulations. I mean, that's major with uh, Lyra Galore. Mm -hmm. Uh, How did y'all meet? Mm. Me and Lyra met. I was actually... Okay, me and Lyra, nobody ever asked me to ask crazy. (laughs) Me and Lyra met um, on Peter Street. I was meeting a PR. Okay. Like a publicist? Yeah, a publicist. Okay. okay. In 2018. Okay. And she was with the publicist. Mm-hmm. And we ain't really, like, of course I knew who she was. And we didn't have, like, much dialogue. But, like, mm-hmm. we, we that's when we first saw each other. You know, we had a mutual friend. Mm-hmm. And when I was locked up, um, like, I was on video I was on video call with them, my friend. And then Lyra was right there. She was like, hey, Rico. Uh, In my head, I was like. Like, down to earth, cool. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm going to get her when I get out. You know? <laughs> Did she know that, though? Did you, nah, like, I get her? I always tell her that, like, yeah. <laughs> but when I got out, I wasn't thinking about that for real. Like, you know. Um, you were just happy to be free. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But we just bumped into each other at the club one day, for real. And then we seen each other, and then we just had words and that shit. Now, now we got a now we got a son on the way. Now you got a son on the way, and y'all, she looks happy. You yeah, look happy yeah. now. A lot of people probably wouldn't have been as confident as you are with you know knowing her past that she dated, uh, was engaged to Rick Ross, and then she you know dealt with P and stuff like that. But you are able to like move past that and just not think about it. Like, what advice could you give to somebody who's trying to date somebody in that type of limelight? I mean, I'm that nigga. <laughs> I don't think about no other nigga. I yeah. don't give a fuck. They, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just what it is. Like, <laughs> I, I like that. I'm not, <laughs> Jesus Christ I'm not, himself. <laughs> that's, don't get no bigger than him. I love the confidence. That's, but I ain't. I can't think about what nobody else got going Before. On. I can't even give you no, no other dude advice because if you got like, if you ain't got that type of comfort, if you're not him, then you going to feel it. It's, yeah. It's just going to be there. But mm-hmm. I don't feel it because I don't You're not care. worried about that. I yeah. don't give a damn. I love that. You know I love that about you. Like, no. that is that is a very strong mentality to have because yeah. a lot of people, we live in a social media world where everybody's thinking about, man, if I post this, if I look like this, somebody gonna say something. And yeah, it's a lot of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. You gotta move a certain type of way and there's a lot of stuff that'll come out with that I don't like. Some yeah. shit I speak on, some shit I don't. But it don't really affect me like by no other nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. What they had or what you no know, comparison. I don't care nothing about that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because... And my, like, 
my confidence has always been up here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even at my lowest. Yeah. Because I always know where I'm going. And I always know, and I know what I do. What's your sign? I'm a Capricorn. I, that makes perfect sense to me. Well, and I mean, I know. Mean? Like, it's not in a bad way, but I know. <laughs> no, so look. Capricorns are very strong. So my dad was a Capricorn. He's not here anymore. Mm. Um, he passed away from colon cancer. But oh, yeah. he was very, no, thank you. Um, he was very strong-willed, strong-minded, all about his money. He had a really big heart, and he didn't care about what other people thought. So I can, that, that mentality, I can sense it, you know, especially for you to say that. Because yeah. it takes a certain type of man to be with any type of woman who's well-known. Yeah. Like, whether she yeah. had a good past or not. Yeah, you know? for sure. It, it's like... You, it's not for the week, I tell you that. Mm -hmm. Cause you gonna hear and, and you gonna hear and people gonna people gonna get weird. Mm -hmm. and people gonna say stuff and, and stuff gonna come to you. You gonna like situation gonna come. And you gonna be like some situation you gonna feel tried. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like I said. I don't say I'm not gonna say and say I like everything that come my way. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I'm just confident in myself. And if you ain't content with yourself, then. You, yeah, you can't. You ain't ready to deal with no situation. Like that. I hope everybody taking notes because that's major. Yeah. Now you got a baby boy on the way. Mm -hmm. um, talk about, you know, you not having your father in your life and how you plan to be a better father for your son. Um, yeah. So I grew up without my father, but I just recently met my father. Oh, year. congrats! Well, how was that? Crazy. Okay. Crazy. He, but it's a blessing because like he, it's crazy. It's it's a blessing because he like. He like me all over. Like he's like he's You can really see yourself in yeah, him. Yeah, for sure. For sure. He older though. My dad like he like sixty. But mm -hmm. he act like he's forty, like Jay to tell you this nigga move like he's forty years old. <laughs> <laughs> but um it's really twenty, I mean like But I, I mean I met my whole I got a whole family, you know, you know what I'm saying? On the other yeah. side. So even just me, me and my dad, mm -hmm. I'm still learning now. Because yeah. like like fatherhood is like something that like I never experienced on either end because it's my first child and mm -hmm. I didn't have a father, mm -hmm. so I just look at it like it's another it's another chapter of life now yeah. that I I can learn. Yeah, like I'm just learning. I'm just embracing it as it comes. It's kind of humbling because you like you could feel like you know everything in the world. Of course, you get like money, mm -hmm. uh, material shit that don't really mean shit, but material shit or whatever success, whatever it is, but. Mm -hmm. When it's a new chapter, something that you don't know, you can only be humble and just take it how it comes. Absolutely. You know and then, I, I mean, Lyra has a kid already, so, mm -hmm. you know, she's going to be able to teach you and yeah, you'll so be I'm, able to. Yeah, I'm already learning. Yeah. Like, exactly. I'm, I'm with her child all the time, so. I'm you got all... any names yet? No, we still trying to figure it out. <laughs> Y'all trying to figure it out? <laughs> Okay, but you still didn't answer my question. So I want to know, like, how, you know, how you plan to be, like, what's one thing that you want that you didn't have that you plan to give your son? Mm, like, the push to do whatever it is you want to do and the support. Because mm -hmm. if I ain't have to, for real, like, if I ain't have to do a lot of shit that I did, I would have probably took a different route. And it's not to say that my mama wasn't didn't do good at all but she was a woman and she only could do so much yeah and then in the environments and, and just the world we live in like you know as a child like you very vulnerable mm -hmm. I, don't give, I don't give a damn how smart you are it's mm -hmm. like easy for like it's easy for you like you to take this route and not know this the wrong way absolutely you know what i'm saying and like i said i was grown my mom was at work all the time like so I was out here. I've been. I, I hopped out the porch at like twelve. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when and I didn't have nobody to tell me don't do that. Yeah. Don't go that way. I did, but they wasn't in my household. Yeah. So they might be like, don't do that. I ain't listening because I'm grown. I'm an independent. Of course. So at a young age, you know what I'm saying? So it ain't, I, I want to be there for my son to be able to be like, and to tell him like, look, if you go that way, this is what's gonna this happen. Gonna happen. Give you know him options. Saying? Yeah, like mm -hmm. I can't tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. But I can only show you and try to like and, and hit him with the you. red pill or the blue pill. Yeah, and teach you like, look. <laughs> yeah. You see this picture of me with this bald head? This is when I was in prison. <laughs> yeah. If you do that, your ass going to prison. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. Versus, you know, I didn't have nobody there. Like there was no never no male in my household. To, like, so I just want to teach him how to be a man. Like I learned how to be a man from trial and error. 
I love it. You know what I'm saying? Whew. Well, I'm going to lighten the mood just a little bit. We got to get into this music. 1008 Degrees yeah. uh, is the new project. Is it an album? EPK? EP? What is it? It's, it's whatever you want to. Whatever, whatever you, you It's a project. It's, an album. it's more of an album, but it's, it's a project. It's a project. If, you project. Wanna, if it's a mixtape, that shit. I don't, I don't even know how, mm-hmm. how it go these days. Yeah. yeah. Everything just is put it, album. Just put it out. <laughs> Everything's an album if it's, yeah. you get paid for it. If it's That's streamed. true. That's true. And I forgot who said that, but no, that's true. So talk about like how you even came about, number one, the name, but then two, what's the passion behind this project? Okay, 1008 Degrees is based on, 1008 is my label. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, uh, 1008 Degrees is just like, you know, it's it's kind of like a spinoff of Juvenile 400 Degrees, okay. but 1008 Degrees, like that's super hot. It's coming, yeah, it's yeah, fire. You know like, what I'm saying? So uh, that's, that's how I came up with the name. It just hit me one day, like 1008 Degrees. It's crazy. I was finna drop. I didn't tell nobody the name. And one day I woke up and I was finna drop like the next month. I think mm-hmm. I ended up pushing them back to January, but I was finna drop like October. I woke up one day and nigga young boy dropped 3,800 3, degrees. <laughs> I, like, I know you were hot. You were I'm mad. Like, you bro. were like, what? I was so blown. I'm like, man, no fucking way this nigga dropped 3,800 degrees. When you put it out in the atmosphere, somebody always gets yeah, it. That's why. But how I look at it like, young boy, young boy, he far yeah. gone. Yeah. We in two different lanes. Mm-hmm. And two, that nigga finna drop 10 more projects in After the next that. two months. Yeah. They not gonna even remember this name. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I look at it like that. And um, so. No, degrees. That's how I came up with thousand eight degrees. Um, okay. Project. You got Huncho on there. You got, got Huncho, um. I got Huncho. I young Ma. Got Young Ma. I got Molly Meach. Okay. I got a uh, fifth world greeter. I got um. Damn, I can't. If it's somebody else, I'm missing. Oh, I got an extra chip. I got chip. Oh on yeah, there. you got chip yeah. on there. So how do you? Because a lot of artists don't know this, but how do you go about getting the feature? I know sometimes it's always like your homeboys, the people that you can call that you believe in. But like, what's your process in getting a feature? All them my homeboys. Everybody all them your is, homeboys. I grew up with them. Some of them I grew up. All them my bros. They like all them is brothers. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, all them is personal homeboys. So I can't really explain it because because you just know. Yeah, you, I just you, every. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I don't. I don't. I, I. I did my first real like, I would say big feature actually yesterday. I, I ain't gonna disclose the name though. Okay. But I ain't got no real big features. Wait, but we know you got cosign from Lil Baby and you know. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They, shout they, they believe they shout you out. Yeah, they, they believe in you. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, I mean, I grew up around all them. Like all yeah. us grew up together type shit. Yeah. Like we might not have been in the same hood, but we was all like. In know, Atlanta, yeah, everybody exactly. from, from the city. Yeah. Um, so right now we got like it's basically a lot of fire that's rolling like coming out about it. Everybody's been talking about it. The views mm-hmm. going crazy. Yes, You're putting right. out visuals. Uh, shout out to your team for that because I mean you can't do anything without content. Uh, what's been the most exciting thing about making this project? Like what was your favorite moment? Uh, you can give me a studio story. You can give me anything that making had to do. Making a project. Yeah, making a project. Shit, when that twelve o'clock hit. <laughs> um, January 14 when they dropped. Yeah. Because I already knew what it was going to do. Because mm-hmm. I put, I did took the whole year off of this project. Really? I ain't dropped nothing in 2022 period. What, what's the, I know it's the focus, but why the year off? I didn't take it, I didn't purposely take it off. Mm-hmm. It just, most half the year I was negotiating deals, trying to figure out which way I was going to go. And then I got caught up when I was finna drop in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. I just got advised not to drop at that time. And before, I was going to drop before that, and I had personal stuff going on. But throughout the whole time, I just was recording, just yeah. constantly recording. And then it just time came in January, I'm like, I'm ready to drop top of the year, first quarter, they get it. Well, you still working in a time where everybody's saying, you know, hip-hop is dying, artists are dying. Yeah. Uh, why is it important for you to keep going, and what's keeping you going? I mean, because I know it could be kind of, it could deter you a little bit to where you feel like you may not even want to put music out because you don't, everything that comes with it. I keep going because music. I detour. I, de- I detour from music for years. Okay. Running the streets. Mm-hmm. But it's always been a passion, and it's always been like it a comes problem. back. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. it, people always bring me back to it. I mm-hmm. can't run from it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I had to keep working throughout times where my career was on the flow. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even thinking about rap. I just go to the studio just to keep my Cause I always never let go of my dream. Basically, yeah. like, yeah, I can make money here, there, and a the third, but this is something that 
I didn't even choose. Music really kind of chose, chose me. You. Like I told I like you, it. I did my first project. It went crazy, mm -hmm. and I didn't even expect it. <laughs> like I literally, yeah. the first song I did in a real studio, my eyes was closed. And wow. When I when I opened my eyes, everybody in the studio was going crazy, and I was like, "Damn, I ain't think this shit was going through that." Mm. So I had to, but I had to work through like the the times where my shit was on the flow. Like yeah. I had barely no support. Mm -hmm. But that's because I wasn't working for nobody to was taking this taking me serious. Yeah. So even now, it's just it's just I'm trained. That's how that's what I'm trained to do to keep going to the studio, keep working. The work ethic is there. It's there. Yeah. It's so, got to be in you, not so, on you. Yeah. So I don't know <laughs> nothing but keep going, and then you just match it with hustle. Yeah. Now that I put it in my head, I'm finna go for this shit. now. I just treat it like the streets. I'm going. Like I ain't gonna stop. Like mm -hmm. I'm just gonna keep going. And you making it happen. I appreciate you so much for talking to us. Uh, tell everybody where to follow you on social media, how they can, you know, stream your music and everything. Uh, Rico Cash one zero zero eight on Instagram. Rico Cash one zero zero eight on Twitter. Rico Cash Facebook or whatever Google YouTube YouTube channel Rico Cash. You can follow me as well on all social media at my Asia Simone. That's M I Asia and Simone with a Y. And we appreciate you so much, Rico. We out.